Hey guys and welcome to the YouTube channel Drop From The Circuits. This is your host Prashant Sharma and today we are going to build a temperature and humidity sensor which will work on a battery. Yes, we are going to make a temperature and humidity sensor which will be totally wireless and it will work on a 3.7 volts battery and practically this battery will last 6 months. Yes. Once fully charged, this battery will last 6 months and the sensor will keep on giving us data. This video will contain 4 major parts. The first one will be the design phase in which we will select the components, what components we need and how we are going to manage the ESP to run on a 3.7 volts battery then in the second phase we will design a printed circuit board on which we will attach all our components in the next phase we will assemble the components assemble everything and make it working and in the final phase we will program the chip and we will test it so that's all so without wasting time let's get started So let us design our system. So the first point is we will run our system on this 3.7 volt 500 milliamp power battery. So let's write this down. So first requirement is we have a 3.7 volts 500 milliamp power battery. Now second we have an ESP C3 chip. So this model is ESP8685 WROOM03 which is a chip from the family of ESP C3 series. So second part is we will be using an ESP32 C3 series chip which is ESP8685. Now, how a ESP can work from a battery? Practically, the ESP32 works on 3.3 volts, which can vary from 3.2 volts to 3.6 volts. Any voltage above 3.6 volt will damage the chip. And talking about the battery, the battery will give us 3.2 volts to 4.2 volts. So whenever the battery is on 3.2 volts, that means we are 0% charged. And when the battery is 4.2 volts, we means the battery is 100% charged. So we cannot make this thing work because if the battery is 4.2 volt, it can damage the ESP chip. So how we will change it? Practically, we can use an AMS triple one seven voltage three point three volts voltage regulator. But the AMS triple one seven voltage regulator has a major issue. It has a 1 volt dropout voltage. That means this is our voltage regulator and this is our output. So we have to get a voltage of 3.3 .3 volts. But in order to get a voltage of 3.3 .3 volts, we have to provide an input of 4.3 volts minimum. That's a practical problem with the AMS 3.17 IC. So the dropout voltage which is 1 volt, the IC will require minimum 1 volt of difference to the output and input then it will start to work. If we will give it 4.2 volts, it will give us practically 0 volts output. That's an issue. So we cannot use an AMS 3.17 IC. 
So instead of this IC, we will use MCT1700. So this is also a voltage regulator and it has a much lower dropout voltage, which is approximate 150 milli millivolt, which works for us. So this is all the circuit. So practically what we will do, we will have a battery, we will have an ESP, in between we will have MCP1700 which will provide voltage to the ESP, then with the ESP we will have a temperature and humidity sensor and that's it. This is it. That's how we are going to design our circuit. Now we have another problem. Our battery is 500 milliamp hour only. Now in order to run the ESP on this 500 milliamp hour battery for too long, we need to find a solution. Practically an ESP32 chip consumes around 80 milliamp power consumes around 80 milliamp for a Wi-Fi operation whenever a Wi-Fi is connected then we need approximate 80 milliamp power if we are going to consume 80 milliamp power from 500 mAh the battery is going to die soon so what we will do we will turn on the ESP Suppose this is the graph and here we have time and here we have power consumption. So what we will do, we will turn on the ESP, it will consume around 80 milliamp power. It will consume around 80 milliamp, then we will send the data and go back to deep sleep. In the deep sleep mode, ESP consumes close to 0 ampere so we will go we will deep sleep the ESP the ESP will keep on running for around 10 seconds then it will turn again on consume some power send the data then go back to deep sleep in this way we will consume energy only for a moment of time which is around 0 0.5 seconds so this is how we are going to run our ESP32 on a battery. Now instead of connecting to a Wi-Fi, we will use ESP Now. ESP Now is a protocol in which we broadcast the data on to a slave device. So the ESP will act as a master device, it will send the data to a slave device and then go to deep sleep. And in this method, we will be able to run our ESP to send temperature and humidity data with just a 3.7 volts battery and practically will run up to six months. In order to run it on for six months, we have to raise up the time to 30 seconds. So the ESP will broadcast the data after every 30 seconds periodically. So this is the design. I think we should get to our computer screens and start designing the printed circuit board. And here comes the sponsor of this video, which is a professional PCB design company, LTM 365. So we are going to design our PCB on LTM designer. Then we will share the PCB through LTM 365 which practically gives us a lot of features. Let us design the PCB and talk about the LTM365. So this is the circuit I designed, which have the ESP section, the battery section, the voltage regulator section, and the sensor section. Designing schematics on LTM and sharing schematics with other professional people on LTM365 is really easy. 
if i want my circuit to be checked by any professional sitting in some other country i can use ltm 365 i can upload my project on ltm 365 and get it checked by any professional from overseas or maybe from another city and ltm 365 make it real easy to comment out the problems to provide the possible solutions and to chat and everything so that our, we can manage a big team efficiently and then i converted my circuit into the pcb this is how the pcb looks i made sure the pcb should remain as small as possible because i want my circuit to be compact now we will order our pcbs first of all we have to go to nextpcb.com we are using next pcb because their pcb quality is really great and the prices compared to the pcb quality is perfect and they ship pcb within three days so first of all we will go to pcb code then we have to upload our gerber file like this once the file is uploaded we can check the pricing and everything in this section now the files have been uploaded you can see on this section the pricing is getting updated we will get pcbs for 1.9 dollars only and within 48 hours let's see what are the values currently our material type is fr4 we have two layer count the size has been automatically picked up from the gerber files quantity is five pieces I am going to change the color to black because I really want my PCBs to be black. The price has to slightly increased because we are choosing the black color which is not normal. Then we will choose our country. In my case it is India. Then we can choose our delivery partners. And once everything is done, we can just add our email address and click on add to cart. Once the payment is done, we will get the PCBs within two days. Yes, within two days. Now let's wait the PCBs to arrive. So here is the box. And here are the PCBs. Wow, they look really great in black color. And the quality is amazing. I think now we should move on on assembling these PCBs. And here is a time lapse for you. So sit back and enjoy the process. So now here we have our temperature and humidity sensor. Instead of using a battery, I just soldered two wires to my power supply. And currently I am giving 3.71 volt with a maximum limit of 0.300 milliamp. And this is the circuit. So
so now we will power this circuit and it will read the temperature and humidity of the area and it will send it to the slave device so here we have the slave device so in order to power the slave device i am just using the power supplies and built usb port so as you can see the slave device has started now when i will power on the master device or the temperature humidity sensor it will turn on send a signal with esp now to our slave device and that device will show the temperature and humidity on the screen now you can see the temperature is being displayed on the slave device which is 31 degrees celsius it's really hot in here so currently i am only showing the temperature so you can also send the temperature and humidity both from this sensor or you or you can use some other sensor instead of this one and send a lot of data using this now i have connected a sensor with the battery and i am currently placing it near the air conditioner and now the temperature will start to decrease the slave device is capturing the temperature from the sensor and displaying it currently you can see the temperature just brought down from 26 to 23 and now it has gone even less to 20 degrees celsius that means our sensor is working perfectly fine the sensor is looking really really great it is really compact and the best part is there are no wires attached with just a battery the sensor is working fine i will upload all the files with the circuit files as well as the pcb fabrication files using LTM 365 you can just go to that link and download the files from there and a great thanks to the sponsor of this video LTM 365 and also a great thanks to next pcb for providing these great looking pcbs so that this project could have been possible and great thanks to you guys for supporting me and i think this is it for this video if you like this video hit the thumbs up button if you are new to this channel and want to see more of content like this consider subscribing and press the bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming videos thank you for watching have a nice day